This episode of Command N is all about education, from iPads in the classroom to honest music on the streets. Welcome to episode 245 of Command N. I'm Amber. Before we get to Jeff and Laura's take on technology in the classroom, here are a few interesting and educational social media links. First up, if you're a fan of augmented reality, you'll love the Terminator Vision app. This allows you to point your iPhone at your Facebook friends and get all of their profile information front and center. It's a little creepy and not yet available to the public, however, the developers are in the process of getting it into the App Store. Mashable just posted news about their top picks for the most social media savvy universities in the U.S. As for who tops the list, it is Harvard University. This is all based on how much these schools use Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Not a big surprise to see Harvard at the top, considering that Mark Zuckerberg founded Facebook there in 2004. I need to do something substantial in order to get the attention of the clubs. If you're looking to learn from an industry that's using social media well, look no further than the fashion world. There are plenty of examples of fashion bloggers and leading designers alike who are embracing social media and building communities online. Recently, Oscar de la Renta had a very innovative campaign using Tumblr where he asked people during New York Fashion Week to upload their photos, tag those photos, and that became the foundation for an online fashion show on Twitter. Found my locker and I found my classes. I left my lunch and I broke my glasses. Every year going back to school involves more technology than ever, so this episode we thought we'd touch on a few of the innovative ways that technology is being used in modern academic settings. Last episode we spoke about tablets and one fairly prominent high profile use of technology in universities is incorporating iPads into the learning environment. Seton Hall, for instance, has provided every full-time student with an iPad to help with things like note-taking, file sharing, research and even textbook use. Anyone who's had the experience of carrying around a big backpack full of heavy textbooks will really appreciate that so many new titles are available electronically these days. It can be really tricky sometimes looking at your library catalog to figure out which ones are electronic and which in print, so I really recommend becoming friendly with your librarian. Uh, you're also seeing many institutions making deals with companies, pu publishing companies like McGraw-Hill who are providing more and more of their textbook content electronically so that students will have access uh, to digital formats for a variety of uh, devices they can use. Tablets and mobile phones are already enormously popular on campuses and schools are adapting to this in several ways, one of them being the use of QR codes. A lot of really interesting things being done with QR codes on campus. For example, if you head back to your library, you may find you can scan a book, uh, get more information about that title, you can probably get a list of new titles, new arrivals in your subject area, or even scan a code and get uh, book a study room or get an, a downloadable audio tour. And of course, social media is coming into this space as well. From North America to South Africa and beyond, teachers are using Twitter as one example to make class-related announcements, distribute course materials and other resources, promote discussion and lots more. There are even full university level journalism courses being taught on the subject of Twitter, so clearly professors are really going out of their way to make use of different technologies, harnessing platforms like blogs or Facebook to create active learning environments for their students and really make the, the experience of being at university better than ever. Yeah, and the digitization of so much material from books to music to movies has changed something else important. There's not nearly as much stuff to move into your dorm each year. Sweet! Losing your laptop can be a horrible experience and one that is even more likely at university as you go from library to your classes to home with a ton of distractions along the way. So here are five tips that will help you keep your laptop and its data safe. First of all, buy a physical lock and use it. Attach your laptop to a piece of furniture or something solid so somebody can't just walk away with it. And there's even locks like this for tablets now. The laptop locks start at like 30 bucks, so it's an investment worth making. 
Secondly, encrypt your sensitive data. Uh, this is built into a lot of modern operating systems and there's free applications for it. And it'll allow your, your most private data to stay secure for whatever reason if somebody is poking around inside your laptop. And that doesn't mean it's stolen, maybe that means your uh, roommate's looking at it or whatever else, but uh, a good safety tip. Three, back up your data. This is an oldie but a goodie. You know, you don't have to have your laptop stolen to lose a lot of valuable information because of a hard drive failure or some other problem like that. So always keep a second copy of your data off-site or on a backup somewhere where your laptop isn't. Four, and this is totally high-tech, you can install a monitoring app like Prey or Undercover. And what these do is they phone home to a server and check to see if you've reported your laptop as being stolen. And if you have, they can send you things like the IP address of where your laptop's being used. They can take a couple snapshots with your webcam, hopefully capturing whoever's stolen your computer in the process, and do things like that that can help you track down your laptop and hopefully nab the person who, who took it as well. And finally, engraving your, your computer or your iPhone or, or tablet or whatever, just if you have your name and email address engraved on the back or something, it can act as a deterrent to thieves because it can make it harder for them to sell to somebody else and it puts them more at risk of being caught. So that's what I like to see at the end of the day. Thanks to Jonathan for sending us a photo of himself on a recent trip to Boston where he's wearing a Command N t-shirt. Very cool. And also our web pick this week is from a Command N viewer, Fabio, who sent us a link to this video from Honest Music, which is a new record label from the Remix Project. It doesn't matter if it's street, conscious, commercial, club, singer, songwriter, whatever. So long as it's honest, so long as it's real. The Remix Project is an initiative in Toronto for young people to learn more about making art, music, and video production. That's all for this week. As always, you can find us online at commandn.tv. See you soon. We're committed to music that makes it to your playlist. Honest music is about moments in time. Heartbreak and heartache, joy, pain, love, revolution or redemption. All, some or none of these things and more. At its most fundamental level, honest music is a celebration of the human condition.